In chapter 26 of Candide, Candide is astonished to suddenly be pulled aside by none other than Kakembo, as he and Martine stay at their Venetian inn. Now a slave, Kakembo has been separated from Kunigond, who is in Turkey. He covertly tells Candide to prepare to leave after dinner. Candide and Martine dine with six other guests at the inn, all in Venice to celebrate the carnival. It turns out that all the guests are deposed kings. They each tell their stories, which are very sad, but none is as depressing mm. as that of Theodore, king of Corsica, who no longer has a penny to his name. Each of the other ex-rulers gives him 20 Venetian coins. Candide gives him a diamond worth a hundred times that. Oh. They all marvel at this mere commoner who's in a position to give a hundred times as much, oh. and actually does give it. As they leave the table, four deposed queens arrive, but Candide takes no notice, thinking of only Cunegonde. All of the six deposed kings were forced out of office for various reasons and in different ways, but their futures all turned out the same, tragic and bleak. Voltaire's fictitious round table illustrates the tumultuousness of world politics in the 18th century. It also serves as a parable or a story with a moral about how far and how fast a man, even a monarch, can fall as well as how worthless titles really can be. All these kings have titles and noble roots, but they're all destitute, just there to enjoy the carnival. Only common Candide has any actual money. The former kings can't believe that a commoner with money would be generous enough to share so much of it without a second thought. However, Candide's action reflects Voltaire's own reality. He was quite wealthy by the time he wrote Candide, thanks to his exploitation of flaws in the French lottery system. And he actually financed three minor rulers during his lifetime. Think of him as a major campaign contributor, and then some. 